Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas, and today I'm going to be talking about how to make black and white editing easy using Capture One. With Capture One, you have the ability to click and go using presets and styles. Now, you may be familiar with presets if you're a Lightroom user, um, which can apply multiple settings. Well, presets and Capture One are a little bit different, um, as well as styles. We'll get into that next, but first, let's start with presets. Once we're in Capture One, we can look specifically at presets. Now presets are going to be single steps or tools. What's different about presets in Capture One versus Lightroom is that in Capture One it's one tool at a time for a preset, and in Lightroom you can use multiple tools. So specifically in Capture One, if I need to create a preset, I have to do in each of these tool panels. Well, before we get started, we want to add black and white to our tool set. Well, as you notice right now, we have exposure, local adjustments, we have um, output, a few different tool tabs. What we need to do is right click and add the tool tab for black and white. Now what this does is it gives us all the specific black and white tools that we need in order to adjust our image. You'll notice that styles and presets automatically show up at the top here. If you need to add that or any other tools, you can right click on any part of the uh, top of a tool and choose add tool and you can choose any of the options here. Now specifically, if we want to create a preset, it's pretty simple. First we need to select our image and now we can choose enable black and white and maybe we want to adjust some settings here. kind of mess with the luminance in the different parts of the image. Now we can click on the manage presets button and we can choose to save this user preset. Now it's only going to check mark the adjustments that I've selected which I'm going to hit save and it's going to create a black and white preset in a specific subfolder for me. Now you'll notice if we go back a few steps, you can see the path from where the uh, presets are stored. And as I have a bunch of custom folders here, you can definitely create new folders for each of your presets. Um, I can create an 09 underscore uh, black and white. add that folder and save my new preset and save it there which makes it very simple for me to use it on multiple photos in the future so I can drop down user presets I can go to the 09 black and white and I can select that specific convert black and white preset pretty simple to create now that we saved and applied a preset, you'll notice at the top of the styles and preset panel, it's showing under the applied section. Now we can go into a different tool like exposure and talk about stacking presets. When you stack a preset, it's only going to allow presets within a specific tool to be applied over top of other ones. So if we have stack presets unchecked like it is now, I can apply presets which are going to override each other. So as you see in this one, there's a plus 25 to contrast and brightness. If I choose another preset for plus one exposure, it overwrites all of my settings. Well, if I want those to stack on each other, I can choose, reset my image, click on stack presets, then I can choose plus one exposure, and the 25 adjustment to the contrast and brightness and everything applies on top of themselves. Well, obviously this is a little bright, want to bring that way back down, but just to kind of show you how the stacking of presets works. And that's going to be important when you're using each uh, different tool and applying multiple presets. Let's look at a couple pre-built presets to apply them to our image to get our black and white edit a little closer to where we'd like it to be. In the exposure panel, clicking on the manage presets button, we can choose simple black and white medium contrast and as we hover over each one you see that it makes that change for us. In choosing that 
preset, you'll notice that it drops the saturation down to negative 100. Not specifically my favorite type of process for black and white conversion, but I want to show you the difference between dropping the saturation to negative 100 and allowing the black and white tool to convert your image. If I turn off enable black and white, you notice that it doesn't change the image at all. Let me zoom in here and show you that none of our color luminance options that we're applying affect the image at all. So as you'll notice with that saturation at negative 100, it doesn't allow us to change any of these settings or at least allow them to apply to the image. If I undo saturation, now we can start to manipulate the luminance in all those different colors. That becomes very important when you want to fine tune your image and really tweak the different uh, color tones in the image overall. Now let's go down to the levels panel and start to look at how we can customize our toning for our black and white image. I'm going to minimize some of these other tools so that way we can focus specifically in the levels panel. I can actually grab this and bring it out to my image so I can focus solely on this specific adjustment as well as I can bring curve out and drop it below to look at this as well. So you'll notice in the levels that there's six different options for us to adjust our image. We have the RGB output values at the top and then we have shadows, midtones, and highlights at the bottom. Now if you click on any one of these points and drag in you'll notice that our highlights become quite a bit brighter, our shadows become darker, it starts to add a lot of contrast to the image. Well if I want to have more of a matted look what I can do is I can start to manipulate the RGB values and start bringing them in towards each other. So as we zoom in, we can, we can choose our um, black output level to be 20 and the white output level to be 240 or even bring it into 235 to give the image a little bit more of a matted look. Now, if we want to increase some of our contrast in the highlights and shadows, we certainly can by bringing in those adjustments. So there's quite a lot of toning adjustments you can do with the levels. And if we want to save this preset, I suggest saving the user preset. It's going to automatically select the adjustments we made. And you can choose to save it in your custom folders as I have here, or it can stay in the levels. Either way, it doesn't matter. But in my different matte tones, I have my different values set up automatically. So if I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to hit cancel here and reset this image. I can choose my specific matte tones to automatically apply to my image. And these are very subtle. There's nothing too crazy about them. Just brings those, the RGB values in just a bit. But levels, there's quite a lot of customization you can do. Um, you also have your mid-tone adjustment to make, which can really help, uh, really help your image out as well. Uh, but whenever you create your custom presets, I always recommend under user preset, just organizing your folders as I have here so that way you can adjust different, uh, adjust different settings overall and quicker. Moving down to the curve tool, you can create more contrast or adjust the tonality of your image even more. What I like to do is toggle between the RGB and the Luma option. RGB is a little less useful when working with a color image. Of course, in this case, we're not. But just to show you the difference between an RGB uh, tone curve and a Luma tone curve is if you apply the RGB, it's going to really boost the saturation and color contrast, whereas the Luma is not. You see that subtle difference? It's almost like turning on vibrance. But it's just a, a setting that you can choose between the RGB clicking there or the Luma option when working in the curve panel. Being that we're working with a black and white image, the difference between these two are pretty subtle. Now that we've created presets, looked at stacking presets and some tools, let's look at default camera settings that apply to our image when we import them into Capture One. This is really important if you don't want sharpening and noise reduction automatically applied to your image. Let me show you what I'm talking about down in the Sharpening and Noise Reduction tool panel. You'll notice that the luminance is set to 50 automatically on your image. Now, if I set this to, say, 0, and I reset my image, 
you'll notice that it'll convert back to color and it goes back to 50. Well, if I want that to stay at 50 when I reset my image, I can choose save as defaults for this specific camera model and it's going to allow me to apply that and then every time I reset my image or I bring images into Capture One with this camera model, it's automatically going to set the noise reduction luminance to zero. I can also do the same thing for sharpening as well as base characteristics. Now base characteristics are very similar to calibration or camera calibration in Lightroom. The curve option, since you have a camera profile or ICC profile in Capture One, it's going to apply a generic Canon 5D Mark IV profile. I can also choose different curves to apply to the image, which is going to uh, change its tonality as it comes in. Uh, typically I'll leave this at Auto or Film Standard. Um, you can also choose to save that as a default if you want the film standard to be applied to all the images. There's also an option for extra shadow, which kind of brings out the shadow detail a little bit in your image. Um, we can choose to save that for defaults. So when I go back through and I'm adjusting my images for different, uh, different settings, if I reset them, those settings stay the same. So adjusting your default camera settings are important if you're not wanting certain settings to be applied to your images at import. Now we're ready to look at styles. Styles allow you to apply multiple tool adjustments with the click of a mouse. Let's look at a few built-in styles that Capture One provides us to see if we can get our black and white edit tweaked with just some default settings. Hovering over each one of the options, you'll see that my image adjusts automatically to the style. If I want to apply this style to multiple images throughout the day, I have the option to do that. If you choose multiple images in your film strip, which I've done here, I can then choose the multi-view option in my upper left hand corner and it shows me all five of the images I've pre-selected. Now once I hover over each style, all five of those images adjust automatically. This is huge to see if a style will work for an entire job, if I need to make some tweaks and go from there. So starting with the Portrait Zero, it's a pretty soft image overall. Portrait One gets a little more harsh. Looks like a lot of structure being used. Portrait Two gets brighter. As you can see, each of my images start to get harsher in clarity and structure. You can certainly go through the different built-in styles to see if any of these work for you. I'm going to stick with Portrait Zero and go from there. Now that we've applied a style, let's start by looking at how stacking styles can really help transform our image much closer to what we're looking for. As you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, I don't have stack styles checked. This is the default setting. If I choose a different style or hover over it, it'll show me the different look that my image will have. But if I actually click on the style, it overwrites the entire image. And when doing that with styles, I don't remember all of the different tools I'm using. Let me show you an example where this becomes a problem. I've already converted this file to black and white. But say I use a style that doesn't have black and white conversion built into it. Now it's taken my image back to color. Well now I've gone back a step. So what we want to do is by going back, before starting with styles, we want to make sure stack styles is selected. So when I can go from this particular look here in my portrait zero, and I can go to matte heavy, it's going to look just like it does when I hover over the mouse. And when I click on that, that's exactly what I get. Very important. Stacking styles is crucial to really creating those dramatic effects, but also making it fast for you to work in Lightroom. Now that we've gotten pretty far from our as shot image to our edited black and white with the styles, let's tweak some of the tools and create a new style for the future use. So if we drop down here into the black and white panel, we can make some adjustments specifically in our black and white panel, kind of boost some of the skin tones here and the brightness. Here we go. Now we can choose maybe to drop our sharpening down. Maybe we don't want to go as harsh on the sharpening. Mess with the noise reduction a little bit here. And we're going pretty hard on the on my levels here. Let's bring out some of our highlights. Got some clipping going on there. I'll go ahead and leave that alone. Just mute some of that. 
So we can get our image tweaked a little bit better here. So now we want to choose Adjustments. We'll go to Styles, Save User Style. So it's automatically going to choose all of the adjustments I custom touched for this specific style. So I don't have to go through and, and recheck all of these different options. That's the nice thing about saving a style. So I'll go ahead and click Save. And I like to choose for them to save under styles themselves. The reason why I do that is so it saves directly underneath user style. So I don't have to go into different folders. Um, let's just call this black and white. We'll call it 05, or 04, matte new. And now that we have that saved, I can reset this image and click on that and get right there. Now a couple tips for presets and styles are you can purchase pre-built styles online. Capture One offers quite a few of them. Uh, but doing a, a quick Google search can find some other options for you if you're interested in purchasing some. Another option for styles is to use them at import. When bringing images into Capture One, you can specifically choose a particular style to apply to your entire set of images. So something like a starting point preset might be a good idea for you to apply at import. Um, you can have everything go to zero, which I've created, so everything that comes into Capture One, everything is zeroed out. Um, there are a bunch of different options for you. Of course, you want to make sure if you're doing a more stylized process to all of your images, why not apply those at import so you can start working from that style. Another great option in Capture One is to create a variant of your image, so that way you can have multiple versions. By right-clicking on the image, we can choose New Variant. And this image comes back in its reset settings, and we can apply stylistic preset to it, so that way we can have two versions of the same file. It's a pretty nice feature in Capture One, so that way you can have a color and a black and white version. I'm sure your clients will want both. Now remember in Capture One, if we don't have this option here selected, Whenever we're making adjustments, whether selecting all images or not, it will only affect the one we have selected. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if I want to reset all of these images, I have them all selected. I hit Command A, and I'm hitting Command R to reset. Well, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. So if I select this first image, select all, and reset, just resets the first image. That doesn't really help me out. If I choose my option here to select all images, and include all selected files when adjusting, I can now reset all of my images. It's gonna give me the prompt to make sure I wanna do that, and I can click continue. Same thing needs to happen whenever you're choosing multiple styles. So if I wanna choose this, even with all of them selected, if I choose matte new, it's only gonna apply it to the one file. Well, I gotta to select to this option, choose matte new, and now all of my files have that same setting. Very important to remember in Capture One. Now that I have my customized styles set up in Capture One, it's click and go for me. Editing has not been this easy, especially with some quick black and white edits. Applying styles are a no-brainer. I can stay in Capture One without having to use edit in feature, using a third-party software like Silver Effects, or go into Photoshop. I can do everything in Capture One. The results I need are here, and they're faster. Using styles in Capture One can take an already great shot in camera with the click of a mouse to a dynamic black and white portrait. There's the results with styles in Capture One. That's all I have for you guys for this month's article. Reach out if you have any questions.